When you first start using Obsidian, because there's such an emphasis in it being markdown based, you might think that it's just text everywhere. And there's a reason for that. Text can be really useful. It's easy to type, it's viewable on all devices, and it's searchable. But what if you're just one of those people who need something a little bit more visual than a bunch of words on a screen? Well, there's a plugin for that. It's called Excaladraw, and it's something that I've been using for a while, but I'm still finding extremely useful in my daily life. In this video, I'm going to take you with me as I create a sort of visual dashboard or map of content for my Obsidian notes, something that's pretty much all text. A map of content is a single place in your vault or in your personal knowledge management system where you start to consolidate all these tiny little atomic notes that you've got all over the place and put them in one place if they're about a certain topic. Now that topic could be very specific, like load testing on the protocol level, or it could be very general. And the idea is that if you have some of these maps of content in your notes around topics that you're interested in, it's a lot easier for you to see the big picture. In this case, I want a very general, very broad map of content. I want all of the areas that I usually write about that I'm interested in in my life. And I want it to be kind of like a jumping off place so I can go there and like go to each section and hopefully be able to decide what I need to work on next. Now Excaladraw is a tool that exists outside of Obsidian. You can use Excaladraw without ever using Obsidian. Primarily, it is a tool for drawing, but specifically with the purpose of communicating information rather than really creating, you know, works of art. Although sometimes for some very creative and talented people, the two do overlap. Now, the Obsidian Excaladraw plugin is made by someone who's not a developer of Excaladraw, but just wanted to integrate that whole Excaladraw experience into an Obsidian plugin. That way you don't even have to leave your vault. And it has some cool features as well that are specific to Obsidian notes, which we'll get into in a second. Now let's get to using Excaladraw. Now I typically show you how to install a plugin, but it's really pretty much the same thing for every community plugin. So you just go into settings and then community plugin, and then you install and enable the plugin called Excaladraw. Once Excaladraw is installed, you can open it up by hitting Command P or Control P to get to the command pane. And then I'm going to type in Excaladraw. And for this one, I'm just going to create a new drawing in the current active pane. So as you see, my vault is in dark mode right now, but because I want you to be able to see it, I'm going to switch to light mode just to make it a little bit easier. This is an Excaladraw drawing, and there are a few things here. This tool panel has pretty much all the things you need to create different elements. This is to select things. This is for creating rectangles. This one is for diamonds and circles. And then there's also arrows, lines, drawing, text, and images. But let's remove this and I'm going to start out with an image that I found online. So I have this idea of getting an icon of a woman with red hair or something in the middle and then all around her are going to be icons for every area of interest. So I did find this one. I think I'm just going to get this. I'm going to hit copy and then I'll go back to Obsidian and I'm just going to paste it. That was just a command V. So I'll put her like there. I don't know, it looks like it's in the middle for me. Now I want a few things around her. So maybe something about YouTube, but I want to actually create the YouTube little icon. Now this tools panel, it has, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got like numbers on the bottom here. And that's just for keyboard shortcuts if you'd like it. So I'm going to hit number two, which selected the rectangle. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to create like a thing like that. But I want it with like curved edges, like the YouTube thing. And I definitely want it to be red. So I'll choose red here as the stroke and then also as the background. Now by default, Excaladraw has this like cool aesthetic of it being hand drawn, 
but for some things it doesn't work so I'm going to change it over here to just be like a solid thing. Now I need a triangle so I'm going to select this line here and so that is one line. I'm going to double click on it and that kind of opens up this editing, special editing thing. And then I'll hold down the Alt or Option key since I'm on a Mac. And I'm going to do like a rough kind of triangle. Now that automatically made it curved because that's what I had. So I'll change the edges back to the, the straight one, and then I don't want it to be red. I want it to be white because we are going to put it over here. Oops, too big. So I can just resize that. All right now that kind of looks like YouTube, right? I'm going to select that, right click and group or command G just so that they aren't moved separately because I kind of want that triangle to be perfectly positioned in the center there. That's if I want to like position it somewhere else. Now let's just put it here and I'm going to ungroup it so that I can click on this red thing and then add a link because I already have something about producing videos. So that's already a note that I've got. So I've got that and let me just show you, now it links to that. So if I click on it, aha, now it goes to my note on producing videos. And I'll just head back to the Excaladraw drawing. Um, to zoom in, you can zoom, it, there are the zoom controls here, or I, you can just hold the command button down while you're changing your mouse wheel. And then to move the canvas itself, you can either hold down the space bar and then drag it as normal. Or in my case, I just click on the mouse wheel and then just drag it. So I've got YouTube there. What else do I have? Well, maybe my work. So I'll definitely want a line for that. I'm going to create a line, but now it's white, so I can't actually see it. So let me head over here. I'm going to put a hexadecimal code here. This is something that I copy. This is my company's logo. So now this line is going to go a little bit like this. Then I'll double click on it and then hold down the option key again, kind of like what I did with the YouTube logo and then make something that resembles like a mountain because that's my company's logo and just close it up here and that automatically got filled in. So that's great. Oh, it's a little, it's not even really straight. So I'll just move it a little bit there. And then I just double clicked on the, anywhere on the screen, but you can also hit the A there and I'll put K6. But I don't want to make that the same color because then I won't be able to see it. So select that and I'll make this white and I'll make it XL. All right can't see it but now I can see it and actually I'll make it even bigger okay and this one will have to be turned a little bit and then I'm going to make a link again and this will be k6 tool because I that's the page that I want to link it to to test that I'm just going to click on it yep it went to the right page and I'm going to go back now, because I know this is right, I can just group this and move it around. So maybe I'll put it over here. What else do I like to do? Um, performance testing definitely has to be in there. That is my day job. I've been doing it for over a decade now. And I kind of want that to be like some sort of charts or something. So I'm going to pick this one. Sure come back and then paste it and then of course resize that because that is too big and that can get a link as well and it'll be performance testing okay let's see what that looks like yeah perfect so now i've got those three things what else do i want so something something else that probably should be here because it's so top of my mind right now is Portugal. My move to Portugal is impending and I'm hoping to do it like in the next month or so. So let's go look for a, like a flag of Portugal Oops. or something. 
I'm going to choose this one because it looks kind of like it was hand drawn, right? I'm going to copy that image and paste it here. Too big. So maybe we'll put that here. I'll put Portugal. And when I hover over it, this is my Portugal note with a bunch of places that we've already been to because we were looking for our houses, for our cities to move to and here regions and everything. So, yep, that's good. Honestly, RPGs are something that I'd like to be here as well. So let me get, uh, let's say a D20. All right, I'm going to pick this one because it's a natural 20. Copy that, paste it here. This one will go to my TTRPGs games index file. Check that that comes up. Yeah, that's all the games that I'm playing and that I have played. So that's good. Maybe make this a little bit smaller. I definitely should have something in here about Obsidian and personal knowledge management. So I'm going to go over here and you'll see that Excaladraw actually has a bunch of things that you can put in here. I've already imported these, but I'm looking for something in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and browse libraries. And these are all a bunch of things that are freely available. You just have to download them and put it into your Obsidian Excaladraw plugin. So um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for like graph, maybe. This looks kind of cool. Um, can't really see it too well, but I think it's what I'm looking for. I'm going to try it out. So don't do add to Excaladraw because if you do, that'll add it to the Excaladraw.com web app. But what we want is to actually download it. Then I'm going to go back to Obsidian and then hit the load button here. And I'm going to select graphs.excaladraw library, which is what I had. Now it's going to load it into my libraries here. So when I click on it again, those drawings are here now. So I think I want like this wild one here. Whoa, that's too big for sure. Let me resize that. And because the advantage of using something from the Excaladraw library rather than like an already created image is that you can still change things about it. Like I don't like that green. So I'm going to make it, I don't know, can I make it orange? And I'm going to have it completely filled like that. Maybe I'll put like a circle underneath it. Just kind of give it more obsidian flavor. And I'm going to put send to back here. And then I'll click on this one again. And this time I'll make it like white or something. Or maybe yellow. Yeah. That works out well. And then on this circle, I'm going to link it to personal knowledge management. And that's a note of mine. And when I hover over it, yep, that's my PKM note. And then I'm going to select this and then group them. Now, I also want to add this now that I've created this K6 one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use that again. So I'm going to right click on it and add to the library. So now when I click on the library, in my personal library is this little K6 thing that I did. I'm going to do the same for this YouTube one because pretty sure I'm going to use that again. Then I probably want something for like gear. I'm actually going to change this one to maybe white. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Then I think the next big one is going to be gear, like computer gear. Yeah, I'm going to copy that. Looks like a MacBook as well. And then I'm going to paste it right here and make that way smaller. This is going to be like for computers and gear and technology and all those things that I love. Put it there. And then I'm going to create a link to my software development one. Now Excaladraw drawings are going to be saved in the format .excaladraw. But you can also turn this into a PNG. So let me open a new note here and I'm going to hit command P again and hit Excaladraw. And this time I'm looking for transclude embed a drawing. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to type dashboard and it found it already. So now it is embedded in this file. 
And there's even like a little edit in Excalibur draw here that when I switch it to preview mode, it's going to disappear. So all I'm going to see is the actual Excalibur draw image, which is really cool. But let's see what happens if I change something. Like maybe I'll put some text here. This is my life. Highlight all of that and make it centered. And then, I mean, I could even make this bigger if I'd like, but this is only to show you a cool feature. And if I go to more options here, I can actually open it as a markdown file. A cool thing is that anything that you type in there will show up here. Now it looks a little bit wonky, right? But you can double check all of the links. You can add things here. Here's my, this is my life here. And there's a whole bunch of like the actual images. And this is a lot of information about where to put what. But a cool side effect of this is that now I can add front matter to it. So I can say type a uh, drawing. And then when we go back to that note, which was the dashboard note, and we go to preview mode, you'll see that that automatically updated. So this way you can just keep changing the Excala draw drawing and not worry about it updating because it always will. Here's a simple drawing. This is an Excala draw drawing of of like different software layers so the application layers here and then the kernel and I put CPU memory and devices. I also heavily use this in RPGs as you might imagine. So if we go to the Atari fishery, I'm the kind of player that really likes to map things out as we're going. So this is to show that we are now in the troglodyte cave and each one of these is linked to a section in my notes. Like this is what that looked like and there's some things about that particular location. So this is something that I do after the session and I send it to the other players as well so that they're not lost. There are so many things that Excalibur Draw can do that I just didn't get a chance to show you. There's a script library full of scripts that other people have written that automate repetitive actions in Excalibur Draw, and you can create your own scripts as well. The iPad experience for Excala Draw is really pretty amazing. I've spent quite a bit of time on my iPad Pro with the Obsidian app on it and Excala Draw installed on it. And I'm able to write in and draw in freehand using my Apple Pencil. And then those notes, including the image, just get synced to my laptop using Obsidian Sync. So it turns Excala Draw into like my on the go capturing device rather than just something that I do when I'm sitting down at my desk. And probably the most interesting application of them all is an entirely new plugin. The developer of the Excala Draw Obsidian plugin, Zolt Vizkain, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but he has this other plugin called Excala Brain, which is not fully out yet, Excalibrain is a new and fully visual way to explore your notes. So just think graph view, but more interactive. And that I can't wait to talk to you about. I don't even really consider myself a visual person. I thought I was happy with text, but every time I use Excalidraw, I just want to use it more. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface here. So if you'd like to know more about Excalidraw in particular, or just about other more visual methods of taking notes, drop me a comment so that I know to make more videos about that. And if you'd like to know more about other plugins, check out this one that I made on DataView, a plugin that has changed the way I create and rediscover my notes. As always, thank you to the Patreons that made this possible and obrigada. Thanks for watching.